Hey there, readers. In case you're new here, my name is Kat, and this is Katie Reads Books. For the month of July, which is National Anti-Boredom Month, I picked out six books to share with you that are absolute page-turners if your TBR is feeling a little bit boring. There are four of these books that I own and two that I got from the library, so we are going to talk about the library books first. The first book is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is not a new-to-booktube uh, book. It is a young adult thriller in which you follow the character Enchanted Jones, and she is trying to make a career as a singer. As she's trying to make it in the music industry, she bumps into Corey Fields, who is a 29-year-old, very famous pop singer. We see pretty early on that Corey Fields is not necessarily a good person. He starts to say some questionable things to Enchanted, and then it becomes very clear that Corey Fields has been grooming underage women. So, we come into this book by finding out that Corey Fields is dead, and he has been murdered, and Enchanted is covered in blood. With it being a thriller, we know that there's going to be a twist at the end, and I really liked the fact that Tiffany D. Jackson wrote this in very short chapters, so it was very easy to just turn the page and keep going. The second book that I borrowed from the library is The Magic Fish by Trung Le Nguyen. Nguyen. I am so sorry. Um, it, is a, it is a Vietnamese surname and I am just not able to make my mouth make the, the sound. Nguyen. Nguyen. That's, that's, that's the best I got. Anyway, The Magic Fish is a graphic novel, which in my opinion makes a book go a lot faster anyway, but the beauty of this book is really in how many dimensions it has. You're following not only the journey of a young boy who is coming into his sexuality and not sure how to talk to his mother about it. You also see the immigration story of his mother and father from Vietnam. And along with all of that, you get several fairy tale retellings from different nationalities because that is how this young boy is teaching his mother to speak English. And I'm getting a little bit teary <laughs> just talking about it. But the entire story is gorgeous. And the illustrations are stunning. Moving into the books that I actually own... The first one is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Now, again, this is not a new-to-book-to-book book by any stretch of the imagination. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but this book is amazing. It does start off with second-person point of view, and I know that a lot of people drop it um, pretty early on because of that. I'm going to tell you that it is worth it to push through, and there's a reason that it's weird, okay? Now, beyond that, the magic system in this book is really badass. It is about a group of people called Orogenes. They can manipulate rock and temperature, and you sort of learn more about the magic system as the characters are learning about the magic system, which, is, in my opinion, is the best way to learn about the magic system of the world. Now... You are following the main character, Esun, who has lost her child. Trigger warning at the beginning of this book for child death. I wish somebody had warned me about that. I was not prepared for that, and it kind of wrecked me. Um, so trigger warning for that. But we follow Esun as she tries to track down her, her husband, Jija, who also has her daughter, Nesun, and... Um, we follow as soon as she tries to track down um, her husband, Jija, who murdered her youngest baby boy. In this world, origins are not looked upon well. They are considered to be very dangerous, and they are controlled by a group called the Guardians. So while Esun is trying to track down her murderer of a husband, she's also being tracked by the Guardians because it's their job to control people like Esun, who are origins and considered to be extremely dangerous. Now, 
there's a lot of mystery that drives this book, but uh, this book and, and pretty much all the books that I'm talking about are very character driven. This one, though, has a plot that just keeps getting deeper. The further that you get into the book, the more, oh shit, that's how that works, moments there are. The next book is Circe by Madeline Miller. It's a Greek mythology retelling of a minor Greek, um, she's not a deity, she's like a demigod, kind of. Um, in, in traditional Greek mythology, she's pretty much overlooked. Um, in this book, Hannah told me whenever she recommended this book to me that it is shamelessly feminist and it was an absolutely spot on description of the book because this is a book in which the main character who is glossed over in traditional mythology and who is like a lot of women in Greek mythology kind of painted more as a victim than as the badass that she could be. So Circe becomes a witch. She is banned from her father's palace. Her father is Helios, who is the god of the sun. And while she is exiled, the gods keep coming after her, um, keep sending tasks her way, um, trying to put her under a yoke, essentially. And she just gives them a big little finger and says, you know what? The only reason I'm exiled is because you're scared of me. And then you get to see her wreck all their, expect all their expectations of what she's supposed to be doing. It was very compelling it was very well written. The prose, I was a little bit worried about the prose. I thought they were going to be a little too purpley for me, but I that was not the case. And the multiple heartbreaks in this book. You, she goes through so much, and you are rooting for her so hard that... At least for me, I couldn't put it down. I needed things to get better for her, so that's why I kept turning the page. Again, graphic novels tend to go fast anyway, just by the nature of graphic novels, but Children of the Whales has a lot more mystery to it than I'm used to seeing in a graphic novel, and so I was very pleasantly surprised with this manga. I already have the next four in the series, and I'm not planning on letting up anytime soon. This book, what is the name of the main character? Chakuro. Um, he is an archivist. It is his job to keep track of everything that happens on the whale that he's on. They are in the middle of a giant sea of sand and he is a child who is an archivist. In his culture, you cannot show emotion and if you do show emotion, they have you um, clasp your hands together like this and then dig your nails into the backs of your hands to try to keep yourself from feeling that way. Um, I can't remember what the reason is why they're not supposed to show the emotion, but I think that it has something to do with their um, spiritual views. It like marks you for death or something like that. Well, this very isolated community in this very sandy sea of places runs into another whale and they find a person there who is um, from another culture. So you have this sort of collision of cultural beliefs that ends up just sort of making a mess of everything. So not only is there some really strange cultural things happening um, giving me an isolated community is a good way to give me a reason to want to find out what happens whenever that isolated community is infiltrated, and this book definitely delivers. Children of the Whales by Avi Umeda. If you've been around my channel for a while, this last one is not going to come as any surprise to you whatsoever, and it's kind of why I saved it for last. I thought I should talk about another kind of book for once, but it's the entire Brown Sisters Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. These books are hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Um, they are full of cheeky um, super drama. 
uh, that you would expect from romance novels. All of them have a sappy, sweet ending, and I mean, they're just an absolute treasure, honestly. Um, in case you're not familiar with the trilogy, that is uh, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and Act Your Age, Eve Brown. And if you ask me to pick between the three, I would tell you I'm not going to do that, taking all three of them with me. So those are the six books that I think that you should pick up if you're feeling a little bit bored with your TBR. If you know of a book that should have been on this list that I didn't put on there, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. And if you want to see more content from me, please do subscribe and ring the bell. I hope that you have a great day. I hope something. There we go. That's what it is. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.